Hey everyone, Nubkex here and welcome back to what has turned into a very rough road to Grandmaster here. Placement game 7. Um, we are 2 and 4. We are very much in the negative win-loss ratio so far. We have 4 games left. I think there's a nice sort of uh, symmetry here. Um, between, uh, you know, got 2 wins, 4 losses, 4 games left. If we win all four, we'll come out 6-4, which would be great. Uh, but either way, our previous two seasons of placement games, uh, uh, pre-season, I think we went 9-1. and one, uh, And that one loss was pretty bad, if you know about pre-season. Uh, season one and two, we went 7-3. So no matter, how, if, even if we win everything from now on, we can never hit that 7-3 marker again. So this season is categorically worse placements than before. Um, but uh, also, considering we've went two and four, the likelihood of us winning four is quite low just going off precedent <laughs> but uh yeah this was um <clears throat> uh I, I did by the way someone was saying in the last video and thank you very much i got a lot of supportive comments over the last videos we've been on a, a very large loss streak uh and people have been very nice so i do really appreciate that someone was saying oh you just got weekend hots players man uh actually played all of these I played all 10 placement games in one night, which was Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, I don't remember. Whichever was the first day on EU. That's I played them all in one go. I wanted to get it done. And that's why it's crazy when you see people there already. Diamond 3 or Diamond 1, you know? Or Diamond 2, a few people there as well. It was kind of like, oh my god, we're falling behind already. But it was a, a big thing for, um, anyway, moving forwards here, is that into this season, I want to play a lot more ranked. That was uh, a big problem last season, is that I just simply don't play enough. But anyway, uh, we got some really good players in this game, actually. This game is a uh, much better... Um, uh, it's a much better standard, just in advance, this one. Thank God. I'm not going to tell you if we win or we lose, but at least it's a much higher standard than the previous could get a game or two have been so that's good but as you see we've got Mane on the team obviously is uh, the main range guy for team Dignitas you can see he's going absolutely nuts he's actually been quite toxic here but uh, he's going kind of nuts uh, at our player for first picking the Rainer again I think Rainer is super strong right now however I would not have him a first pick on Blackheart's Bay definitely not but later pick on Blackheart's Bay yeah sure first pick no definitely not uh, you see Ragnarok, so it's not banned. We banned out Tracer. They banned out uh, Zul. Uh, also, as you can see on the enemy team, they have Nick. Actually, thank you someone was saying in the comments, he's actually a pro player for Two Piece Determined. He was in the previous game where we were playing Sergeant Hammer. He was on the enemy team uh, playing Zeratul. And I was saying in that that he seemed like a really strong player. So there you go. And he is on the enemy team once again, which is kind of scary. Um... But hey, we've got Mene and Kurwa, which is good. I think Nick... I believe Milgazy B as well is if not a pro player a very good one i don't know it's always fun when i bump into these guys I'm like god he's really good and then you guys are like oh yeah he's a pro player that's why i said oh okay that, that makes sense uh anyway we pick up malfurion and murden you can see ragnaros is just making his whole way through this draft and i think ragnaros is actually uh he's probably pretty good you might say siska here might be saying he might be bad on black hearts bay C'est toi que je sens pas. <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. If someone could translate the French, uh, I've got like uh, secondary school French in Ireland. Uh, it's like high school French, I suppose. But it's been it's been a, it's been a while since I used that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you can see you can probably also tell by my commentary. I did take a break between recording a, a day break between recording um, the last set of commentaries and this one. It's getting very negative. I said, all right, let's take a break. Step away. Have a nice cup of tea and come back and we'll be fine. Uh, so the enemy team actually took the thrall I was intending to play. So Black Hearts Bay, you want a strong solo laner down bottom to start things off. We've got two strong range, we've got a tank, we've got a, a, a strong healer. So yeah, we need something that can uh, solo bot lane and then also be decent at, um, at doing uh, the jungle stuff. So I'm thinking Jen, Rex, or Diablo. They're the ones I'm looking at and I'd like to play. Dehaka would be a good option too. Um, I was asking the team, you know, what do you guys want? They don't say anything, though. So, it's all good. I'm going to pick Rexar. Uh, Mene says, uh, he says, I don't know. Right, <laughs> Rokari, anyway. Oh, he is very salty. Very, very salty. They pick up Ra uh, Rhaegar as their final thing. I don't know, I'm kind of curious going into this game, but I thought it was funny to see, you know, Mene, like a, a very well-known pro player, be so negative towards the Rainer pickup. I think it's kind of kind of funny. Um, I mean, 
I, I do think, I really do think, was, I've got a lot of rage at that as well for rating Rainer so highly. I do think he is worth being rated that highly, but again, like I'd say, definitely not. First pick material on Black Arts Bay, definitely not. You want something that's more suited to the particular map. Anyway, we did go for Rexar in the end, so yeah, here you go guys, Rexar game. Uh, with multiple pro players, hope you guys enjoy this one going into it. And, uh... Yeah, hopefully we get at least some wins <laughs> over the course of these four games. Cross your fingers, guys. Cross your fingers. We're gonna need it. Gonna need some luck. Uh, Hunter Gather at level one, of course. Collecting regen globes gives myself and Misha more health regen. Uh, when we finish the quest, uh, we uh, get bonus health on Rexar, helping us be more tanky and more survivable. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, I mean relatively straightforward really I think both teams have a, a fairly uh, good composition overall neither team has a, a real dedicated jungler which is definitely something you can do on Blackheart's Bay I could transition into that as Rexar this is such a weird map because it usually start it depends on, on exactly what heroes get picked right but with Zul being removed like Zul's a classic example of a hero that changes the way the map is played you always start with 4-1 split top and bottom. Why? Because, well, you got two lanes right beside each other at the top, so you really don't want to lose top. I seen, uh, I was playing with a group of players and they insisted on sending four bottom. Guess what happens when you send four bottom? Your one player up top misses out multiple ways of experience. You fall behind in experience and you're losing the game from the get-go. The enemy team actually sent five people top and they're gonna have false set fly bottom. Which is unusual. Well, I'm certainly happier to lane against a false set than I am to lane against a thrall, so that's ha good news for me. Or should we do a uh, uh, hammer to the face? We've pushed this uh, wave out, which is great news for us getting on top of it early. Rexar's pretty bad at, at wave clear early on, so that was actually really nice for us to get it cleared early and we get onto that chest uh, in plenty of time. Send Misha down and just start beating on this false side. We've got him down to half health. So this is going to be an easy full chest for us. Just have Misha zoning out the false side, saying, yeah, you can't come in here. Get him in a stun. Unfortunately, we're out of range to actually get uh, Misha to basic attack. Good warning ping from Mene, letting us know that there's rotations coming. I was hoping to juke the Thrall. Unfortunately, we get hit by everything. But we catch Thrall in the stun as he comes back, and then catch him with our Q as he goes as well, and send Misha in to pick up the two coins. So, oh no, what a turn. This is like the best way to start a game. That's like the best way to start a game. Attempted gank on you goes horribly wrong for them. Uh, we're just owning our lane. We've got seven coins. It could not be going any better. Uh, and that's that's one of the things that Rexar does really well. Is his uh, his stun? Misha's charge is a really powerful stun. Uh, people underestimated just how strong that is now. So we've pushed out the wave. I, I really don't want to push in further, right? Our team are still very much focused on the four-man top, and they're doing a great job. They're winning that. So I need to be super careful, again, of these ganks of rotations that might not be spotted. So I absolutely do not want to be pushing that bottom lane. Instead, I'm just going to walk away while Fawcett deals with it, grab a coin camp, and then I'm going to swing across and start getting a turn in here. There's Thrall. Hello, Thrall. You can still control Misha with the one key. Send her around, which is pretty useful. Just have her zoning out. There we go. Nine coins in. So that's something we don't have to worry about, which is pretty nice. Now, there's a big fight up in the top middle. Li Ming does die before anything more can happen. I'm going to swing down here and attempt to, to push out this wave, get the XP, and stuff like that. Uh, Muradin is still trying to turn in, which is wasting Thrall's time. But I don't think we can really afford to commit to the turn in at this point, right? Because they're saying, all right, well, Li Ming is dead. Uh, the enemy team is all nearby. Like, they could rotate around very easily and kind of catch us out. Go for the stun on Misha, but I do miss it this time around. Just trying to zone him out. I'm calling for a retreat, but Kurwet's pretty certain that he can get a turn in. So, this was a, a case. And it looks like he actually will get it. So, he just had, in that sense, a, a better map understanding than me. So, I kind of learned from that. It's like, he kind of had the feel for it a little bit better than I did. And was like, no, no, no. no. I'm sure we can get this, this turn in here. It's going to be fine. So, that's pretty cool. Once again, I decided, you know what, uh, I, I'm going to be able to clear this camp out pretty quickly because I'm Rexar and I've got my talents. Uh, and then we'll get back to the lane. It's only a Thrall in that bottom lane, so Thrall really can't push the structures that hard. I said it's going to be more valuable. The most efficient use of time here will be to pick up this camp on the way. We're going to miss some XP. Thrall will get some structural damage, but we're going to have a camp pushing then. Uh, a couple more coins for us and just get on that farm. You can see, okay, he's going to get about half a turret worth of damage. Maybe a bit more. Two-thirds of a turret. 
which is pretty good. But we're going to get Thrall to uh, third HP from that. He's got no mana either. So now we've got Thrall with like no HP or mana in the lane. He presumably has a well. Nice root from him. Uh, we're going to have him here trying to defend against uh, a Siege Shine push. So that's going to work out pretty well for us. Our team are still pushing in top. Level 8 to just almost level 7. Yeah, he does have a well. We get him stunned though, and he's taking some pretty big damage here. If I'd hit that Q, maybe could have killed him even. But, oh well, it doesn't matter too, too, too much. We're still going to get a nice push in. Get some nice damage with these Siege Giants. And got ourselves some chests to boot. Anyway, Thrall is, uh, he does eventually kill Misha, that's fine. Gonna tap this well for some mana, I'm just gonna run up and grab this chest. Just kinda using the time while Misha is dead to just get mana and be ready to contest this. Thrall eventually takes that wave out, but he, again, because of this nice sort of chain of events there. Sure, we gave up uh, two-thirds of a tower's HP, in return we got a siege camp, we got the sort of same amount back on the, uh, the tower. Uh, and then the effect of that siege camp is we got Thrall off. He did get one coin, so well played by him. But we get, uh, the other four. It's a pretty good trade for us. Our team pick up another kill towards the top. Nice, nice play from the team. So clearly people are roaming down here. In fact, they're, they're coming from the right-hand side. Falsat flying in as well. I am on the run. Hit a Q through the Thrall. Running to the bottom here. Got Misha. Able to run back towards Nick because I know Misha's stun is available. Falsat flies over the wall. Gets me the Q. Gets me the W. But a beautiful heal from Malfurion keeps me alive. And once again, Rexire, the anti-gank hero. What a turn in this particular game. What a turn in level 10 to level 8. I was, at this stage of the game, breathing such a huge sigh of relief. I was like, oh, thank God. We're not with a bunch of monkeys again. Glorious, glorious. Our team are actually doing great stuff. They're rotating well. They're pinging well. Everything is going well. This is fantastic. Excellent. Grab that Merc I'm going to come up and pay right now. And have ourselves a turn in. Uh, Talons, in case you're wondering, easy prey at level 4, which makes Misha do 150% bonus damage to minions and mercs, and she takes half damage from them. So it makes you really good at wave clear and taking merc camps. Then level 7, Bird of Prey, which uh, makes your Q, you know, that uh, your spirit swoop, do uh, triple damage to minions and mercenaries. So even more wave clear and merc camp clearing. We're getting a big invasion on here. This Rhaegar is gonna go down, and that is seven coins for us. We're gonna grab the siege camp as well. Uh, Li Ming does die up top, soaking those waves, but in return, we're getting quite a large win for us. We're gonna grab their uh, small siege camp too. Didn't name that spirit swoop very well, but it's not the end of the world. We're level 12 to level 9. And Murden has uh, picked up a <laughs> haymaker. I think uh, something like for. Uh, for countering uh, that, I picked Haymaker for that. And then, I don't know what Sapu means, I don't know. But something along those lines, like, I picked Haymaker for that. I don't know. But yeah, level 12, level 10, 7 minutes in. Gonna get a 10 more coins in the bank. Misha, once again, using her to zone them out and bring her back. Come on, Misha. Come on. Now, see, our teammates are roaming down. I was gonna go to that siege camp, but seeing they've moved forwards kind of aggressively here, I'm actually looking to uh, kind of push forwards and do something else. Heroics coming out from the enemy team, leading off with, uh, ooh, nice actually, Malfurion going down with that blessed shield, a laser thrown down as well. Now, Rhaegar is coming in, Earthquake is down, Bloodlust is out, uh, Mighty Gus comes out saving Falstad's life, and that is two of us dead. Misha even going down as well. And a little bit of a turn right there. Three of us dead for no one on the enemy team. Just using a Q to ensure that our teammates can escape. Which, yeah, things hit level 10. And the enemy team has some pretty big heroic abilities. And when you look at their comp, you can see some really scary combos actually emerging, right? So they've got, I think the biggest and scariest combo has to be actually Earthquake plus Bloodlust. Plus, on top of that, Mighty Gust. So you can imagine, Falstad gusts us back in, Thrall throws down an Earthquake, they pop Bloodlust, and suddenly you're all super locked down slowed as this Bloodlusted team just beats on you in the middle of an Earthquake. On top of that, a laser comes down, and then on top of that, um, more stuff. Anyway, I this was just a really, really bad move from me. Really bad move from me. I, I thought we were getting off a better gank. The whole enemy team though was there. Thrall and Falsad rotated in behind us and they both picked me off. I hadn't noticed them. Just a new move for me. Hadn't noticed them coming in. Whereas I think watching that replay I did spot at least Thrall coming. I think actually I spotted both of them coming. 
uh, from Rainer's perspective. Hadn't noticed that in the game. So just big overextension for me going for a greedy gank. Muradin was coming from the base. And yeah, pay with my life. That was a big mistake. You can definitely see some of the fatigue. I, I think... I don't know, I think that's just the screw up, honestly. But I think perhaps more so in the next few games, you're gonna see a few like strategic errors and stuff, just fatigue setting in. Just from, uh, I, I don't know, you could write that one off as fatigue. But I think let's just call it a mistake because I think it was just a mistake and just not looking at the map properly. But more errors coming in. Now this is kind of a scary situation. Let's see what happens. Again, bear in mind this big heroic combination that they have. Now we got the silence, but it didn't work. I think he got interrupted. With that laser, I mean, <laughs> Tychus here, Nick on Tychus, he just sits there, goes, Bloodlust, awesome, pop my trait, I'm gonna melt through you guys. So we did pick up a kill on Rhaegar though, and we only lost Misha, so that's kind of a win for us. Thrall, not sure what he was doing, not sure what he was doing right there. Huge mistake from him, looking to, I guess, just slow down a turn in or something with his lightning, while the whole team is here, and he just gets rooted, picked off and killed, and that's four coins for us, plus a dead Thrall. Really big mistake, giving us a nice in into this game. Nice work by Mene on Li Ming, picking up a kill on the Falstad too. And this is going to let us actually just brute force down this bottom keep. We've got four siege shines with this. Uh, the enemy team attempting to stall this out. Needed to pop my E on right, uh, Misha earlier. Not too good. We do eventually get it off, but yeah, these are going to be doing good damage to this keep. Don't have Misha, so I need to be careful of my positioning. Uh, uh, bear in mind, Murden is almost... Uh, dead. He's got like no mana, no life. Well, he's got life now, but he had low life, no mana. He's got no avatar either. So we do back off using my uh, boars to just back off. It's such a short cooldown, 60 second cooldown. Unleash the boars. Um, what this does, just in case you guys don't know, sorry, I've been bad with the talents of this game. There's been a lot going on. We release a herd of boars. It's like this large conal skill shot, very large. Um, so they run down, they do a bit of damage, and then they reveal and slow enemies by 40% for 5 seconds. It's pretty useful. Here we go, you see the ghost back into the earthquake, focusing down Li Ming. Li Ming is just in a ton of trouble. Rhaegar actually picking off the kill on her, not able to zone her out. Uh, uh, so zone for the Li Ming right there, just really nice play. Gust into, I mean, that's what I'm saying, gust into that, it's brutal. Nice root comes down from the thrall there, and they pick off Muradin as well. So that's two kills for the enemy team. Just uh, really well played by the enemy team right there. Very little we could do. Maybe just being a bit overly aggressive in our positioning. And paying a big price for it. But this game, right? It started off with us stomping, but there's been a huge comeback for the enemy team. Like the game, we're still ahead, no doubt about it. But they're having a bit of a comeback now. No doubt about it. And you can see that the power of their team comp has really activated with the synergies between their heroics. It's pretty brutal. You know, a gust into Earthquake into Bloodlust, then you got a Blessed Shield in Johanna CC locking down even more. Uh, you can have False Set and Thrall flanking like crazy. Tychus just going nuts with his damage. And even Rhaegar doing a lot of damage. It's it's pretty intense, no doubt about it. Uh, other talents, by the way. Wildfire Bear at level 13. Misha, it's like burning rage for Misha on steroids. Really useful. Uh, and then level 16, I went for Feign Death in this game. So we can activate and we become invulnerable and untargetable. It's kind of like ice block for Rexar, but longer. And we can uh, control Misha while that's active. So we're looking for an engagement. Get the boars down inside there. But you can see Muradin is just melting and there's nothing we can do. Earthquake on top. He can't get out again. Uh, Bloodlust is popped and Tychus just tears through him. Uh, Malfurion tries to heal him, but there's, there's just nothing we can do. Absolutely nothing we can do. Nice route. But uh, we've got no warriors left, really, with any CC. Misha died too, uh, and Muradin died. And I mean, I was just thinking, like, Earthquake is... I think Earthquake is the big thing. It's just winning them games. It's just winning them the fight. Every fight, Earthquake is just making loads happen. That's pretty bad micro for me right there. Going forwards at Rexar instead of with Misha, then backing off and trying to jump in with Misha. Definitely some errors uh, in the high-pressure situation. That is this game uh, with like pretty good players on the enemy team and they're playing well and just a really nice team comp from them. Very cool actually seeing, I have to say, very cool seeing bloodless comps come through. They're very scary to play against. Very scary. And I, I, I was saying this, right, when we had the, the, the Rhaegar video. Uh, from the PTR, I was saying like it's it's much like Lily, right? People go, oh, you just interrupt it. People say bloodless, oh, you just like disengage, you just walk away. Well, I mean, often you can't. 
And certainly with Thrall, it's a beautiful combo. It makes it really difficult. Thrall Falstad. I I strongly recommend you don't let an enemy team get Thrall Falstad on this. I see I've got Misha on like auto run back to me and she chooses an interesting path. Actually soaks up a lot of abilities and she almost dies. <laughs> but she didn't die and that's the main thing. But this is pretty scary. Again, we're looking to take a fight, but at the same time, we don't really want to fight too much. Thrall coming around for a flank. He gets an Earthquake in the back line. He's actually focusing onto me, so I pop this. Mene getting a good jump over the wall. Luxic Blessed Shield miss, and he's just on the run, bringing two heroes away, which is good, helping us survive a little bit longer. Misha is in there trying to do what she can, but it's not enough. Tychus is low, though, and Mene looks like he has actually escaped. Murden is on the hunt for something down to the bottom lane. Three of us, though, kind of grouped up here. Murden is now on the run. Li Ming did go down, ultimately false at finding her. Nice pick onto the Tychus, though. The enemy team is low. Uh, Ray Rainer moving forward, looking for something. Oh, but he walks in to the false stat damage from out of the brush, and uh, Rainer goes down. That's our two main damage dealers down. Only myself and Murden left alive. Uh, we're trying to run, but with the damage dealers down, there's just nothing left to do. I pop kind of a desperate thing. I've got nine coins. I'm going down, trying to survive as much as I can. Get the Misha stunt through the enemy team, but that is me down as well. And nine coins to the enemy team. Ah, uh, yeah, mistake from Rainer there. Getting a bit greedy, chasing that down. Um, we've got we've got a pretty. Uh, uh, by the way, I've been complimenting the enemy team comp, but we've got a, a very good composition ourselves. Uh, the enemy keep disco down in the meantime, so it's not. Although we lost the fight, we still got some map advantage out of it. Uh, because we did uh, take out that top keep thanks to Merc Pressure. But uh, yeah, the enemy team is actually ahead in XP right now. We're still going to have all our keeps though. So we've got, they've got the XP advantage. We've got the structural advantage. But of course, they'll be hitting level 20 soon. So this is really, I think, a completely open game at the moment. And even considering how the team fights have gone, I think maybe somewhat in the enemy team's favor. So pretty scary. But uh, yeah, our comp, our comp is, is pretty solid in terms of team fighting. Now, Rexar is not the best team fighter, but we're basically, I've got a slow on my Q, I've got a slow on my Heroic, I've got a stun on my W. I'm basically looking to just CC people, zone them out, and just set up Rainer, just protect Rainer and set him up for all that execution or basic attack damage, which is going to just wreck people later into the game. Now, as you can see, Malfurion disconnected. We now have an AI Malfurion who is making his way towards the coin point. Do not do that, AI Malfurion. Face checking the coin point. Um, so, yeah, now the enemy team is 20. So we need to be super safe, basically. We just want to sit on our arses and wait. They're going to get a turn in. Nothing we can do to stop that. Okay, if we tried to stop the turn in right now, what would happen? I'll tell you what would happen. We would all die because they're level 20. We're not. Uh, they would get a turn in. Then they would just run and kill our core and win the game. So we've got to sit in our asses for a couple of minutes here. Hopefully, if we can, and basically try to get 20. Once we hit 20, we can start contesting things. Luckily, the enemy team doesn't have enough coins, and there's not enough Merc Camps or coins available on the map. Well, I suppose they're all respawning now, goddammit, as I say that. But, um, yeah, it's like they're not going to have enough coins for an actual turn in yet. I think they need, like, 16 or maybe even 18 at this stage. I think probably 16. I'd, we'll find out momentarily anyway. But we're fairly safe. We don't need to contest a turn in. Hopefully we'll get 20 before we do. Even if they get another turn in, we're not going to lose off of that. Um, the big deal is winning team fights. Yeah, they need 16. Both teams need 16. You can see they have 10 coins. Uh, and there's not enough available for them. So we're kind of safe for the moment. You can see I'm just trying to soak just an extra wave. So just soak the wave. I just that's all I do. Soak the wave, get it pushing, just remove the pressure for that siege camp, or that sorry, that's a bruiser camp, for a little while. And then I make my way back to the team. Alright? So just soak up a wave, get the, the pressure off of the keep, push that Merc camp and the enemy wave away from the keep for a little bit, uh, and let our team recruit. We see Johanna's actually top, so I'm feeling comfortable in scouting this out. Uh Mene's ping danger. Obviously I know it's it's danger. But good, you can see actually, very important. Mene is like Grandmaster in multiple regions. That's kind of the stuff you have to do. Someone was asking that as well. What you have to do in terms of shot calling. You can see multiple times in this game, he's been pinging kind of like danger or watch outs for stuff. Just keeping an eye on his teammates, doing map awareness, not only for himself, but for his teammates as well and kind of guiding them. Now, obviously in that situation, I was aware of that and was doing like a, a calculated risk scouting in order to get away with this. But we still have a bot Malfurion. Gust back into all the stuff. The laser's down. Bloodlust is down. Malfurion is in the ice block, but he's almost dead. We're uh, we've fainted as well, using our faint death to try to get out of here. Running back. Uh, gonna pop our heroic. Just try to slow these guys down. Everyone is on low health. Uh, Falstad is dead as well, though. So it's Malfurion. Rhaegar going too deep. He goes down too. 
We're pushing in. Misha got picked off, but that's just fine. We don't really care if Misha is dead. The storm belt misses. Tychus is on the run, tries out the grenade. Uh, Johanna attempting to zone for her teammates. Mane with the abilities, but they don't quite land. We're moving in. Eight seconds until Misha respawns. Troll arrives, coming in from the side with the flank. Doesn't get away with it. Rainer picks him off with the stun. CC, miss our Q onto the Tychus. We're on top of him. No Misha's coming back, and Misha's stun lands. Rainer picks him off as well, and the full team gets wiped. Oh my god, what a crazy level 20 fight. I gotta be honest with you, I didn't know what was happening for half of that fight. I was panicking, everything went crazy, they got the perfect engage, they got the gust into the earthquake, the laser was down, they got the bloodlust. It was insane, but somehow we survived. We pulled through. I, you guys could probably watch that back five times, watch each individual person on our team. Watch it back ten times, watch each individual person on the enemy team and see what happens. But we do... Questions, says Rainer. Clearly the answer to winning the game was, uh, and to getting through this insane team fight with the enemy team, simply get a Bot Malfurion. <laughs> bot Malfurion with impeccable ice block timing, might I add. <laughs> and hey, you know what? Guess what? It doesn't matter that one of our players is a bot if they blow all of their cooldowns to kill that player at the start. Because then it doesn't matter if they're a player or not. And somehow we get through and delighted to get a win. Three wins, four losses. That's a bit of a more respectable placement game ratio. And relatively happy with how I played Rexar overall. Definitely uh, floundered a little bit in the team fights. Here's the talent builds. Not to gather easy prey, bird of prey, unleash the boars, wildfire bear, feign death. And I picked up hardened skin in the end. I wasn't actually sure what to pick at level 20. Wasn't actually sure. But I went for that. And it worked fairly well overall, I think. It worked fairly well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in terms of my play, I thought I did the laning and like the map stuff pretty well for the most part. A couple of big mistakes. Uh, certainly there's that one like gank attempt I, I tried that was just way out of position, got flanked and killed. And was just pretty noob. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the team fights. I think I could have played the team fights a little bit better. But it was very difficult. Certainly, I would say, you know, microing Misha when you've got Earthquake is really hard because you're trying to calculate, okay, I can move her over here and stun someone, and then you go, oh, no, wait, but she's slow, 70% uh, slow. This is really awkward. You're trying to keep yourself safe as well. So it becomes actually very difficult to control Misha. For the most part, she was just kind of stuck in the middle of the Earthquake being a big punching bag. Uh, it was very difficult to get a good stun off. Uh, so that made things challenging. And, of course, just the, the heroic combos the enemy team had. But uh, we pull through in the end somehow. I I'm going to go watch back that team fight after this video as well. I'm really curious uh, to see exactly how it went in, exactly how we pulled it off. I think Rhaegar overextending getting off killed was a, a large part of that, I think. Um, but anyway, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. It was pretty cool and uh, definitely fun for me to get to play Rexar for you in a very high level game uh, on Black Hearts Bay as well with multiple pro players and stuff. So give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy that. And uh, thank you again as well for all the, the supportive comments and stuff that's coming in. I, I do appreciate that. It's really nice. Because uh, I was definitely going into this game quite quite tired and, and quite, quite tilted, honestly. Uh, but still trying to play my best and just power through and get all these placements done. There's still three to go. We're three and four. We'll see how we end up. And I'll catch you guys uh, later today for another one. And then the final two tomorrow, you can find out where we end up with our placements. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.